this is going to be a short video on how to connect two Korg MS-2000s together for eight voices of polyphony. Uh, there are quite a few steps, but uh, it's not difficult at all. And troubleshooting is very easy. Um, I've got a full-size Korg MS-2000B here, and I've got a rack mount uh, original series over there. Um, and this works between any of the versions. You could chain two keyboards together, you could chain two rack mounts together, yada yada no big deal. Uh, first things first, um, physical connections. Both units are going to put out audio, so we need audio out RAN uh, to the mixer over here uh, from both units. And the second connection we need to make is MIDI out on the primary unit. We'll call this one black and the other one blue, because this one's black and the other one's blue. So MIDI out from black to MIDI in to blue. That way it'll respond to note uh, presses and control uh, changes from the keyboard. So next up we're going to get into the menu section. Alright, so uh, what we need to do here is uh, check a couple of things and enable a couple of things. So first things first, let's press uh, the global button. That's going to take us to the global uh, menu. Uh, we need to page over to MIDI and verify our MIDI channel. This is on MIDI channel 5. Now I need to check the other one. I'll page over. It's on MIDI channel 3. So let me bump it up uh, to 5. Okay, so now both are on MIDI channel 5. So now this will send out on MIDI channel 5. The other one will receive on 5. So they're speaking on the same frequency there. Uh, then let's go ahead and page over to MIDI filter, uh, page 4 of uh, Global Settings. Basically here, everything needs to be enabled. Program change, that way when we program change here, uh, it'll be affected over there. Um, I think you can get away with disabling it here, as long as it's enabled on the receiving unit, but I'm not sure. And for the sake of time, we'll just say enable it. Uh, so program change is enabled, control change, same thing enabled, pitch bend enabled, uh, sysx needs to be enabled, and we get to uh, note receive. Now, before we start uh, changing that, at this point both devices uh, will play off of a note press from one device. So this could be awesome for huge evolving pads, um, with the mod signals are running maybe at different rates on both uh, devices but you're only going to get four notes of polyphony because again the, it, it's not splitting the voices they're simply it's simply acting as a controller for the other one and producing audio from the primary one but once we switch note receive to even or odd uh, that's when we're gonna start seeing the voice count split so you set your primary device to one or the other. We'll set this one to even. On blue, I will go ahead and set it to odd. So even on one, odd on the other. Doesn't matter which as long as they're separate. Now, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the keyboard. Okay. So the way this works is not very intuitive. <clears throat> I originally thought that uh, for maximum efficiency of note splitting, when you press one key here, you know, this, this first device will sound. When you press any second key, it'll consider that, you know, the next step and send it over to the other device. That way every other key you play is triggering other devices when in fact it's set just out of one octave every other key in that octave. So, I mean, technically you can still run out of voices here, even though now we do have eight voices uh, polyphony. So, we can hear that. That is the black unit. We press that there. That's the second unit. And you see how they alternate. The good part is... Uh, there's no E sharp here or F flat key, so we kind of switch over. 
So technically you have even odd, even odd, even odd, and then it kind of switches over for the rest of the octave. So all of your white keys do get split about halfway. Uh, same thing with the black keys. So most chords you are in fact triggering both units. Again, I'm sure in some weird combination you're going to uh, run out of voices on one unit while not using them on the other unit. But uh, <clears throat> is it the most efficient? No, definitely not. Is it efficient enough? Yeah, I think so. So we've got both units responding to one keyboard. Uh, we've got eight full voices, but uh, the second blue over there is not playing the same patch that we have loaded here. Now, if we switch patches on black, it does switch on blue. You know, so, you know, we could go over there and try to recreate the patch, but there's a much quicker way. Uh, let's go back to one. We're going to hit global. We're going to page over to MIDI again. And then we're going to cursor over to MIDI dump. Okay. Yes or no, we're going to choose yes. Now, there's a blinking cursor on the left side. Uh, we can move it over to the right side, and then that'll activate that section when we're ready to click OK. So let's go back to the, the left side of here, and it says one prog, and that stands for one program. That's going to take whatever the currently loaded program on the primary sending device and send it to the receiving device just the one program that's loaded. If we uh, plus up, we get to see what the other options are. Uh, PROG, that stands for all programs. That's going to load every single program in this unit into that unit. GLOBAL, that's going to send everything in the global menu. Uh, MIDI settings, calibration, user scale, all of that stuff, that's going to send just that, but no programs. And then the final option is all, which will send all programs, all global settings, basically clone the whole unit from here to there. Uh, the one thing to note in this section, uh, one prog sends the one program like we said, but if you want to keep it on the second device, you have to go through the write uh, process, writing it and storing it. If you choose program which sends all programs over and the other two options global and all those are permanent and you do not have to confirm them it just instantly happens so if you have anything on the second device that you want to keep you need to export it out or save it however you want to save it uh, it's easy enough to just to s switch the MIDI input and outputs and send it from blue over here to black save it out and then you could dump all your programs but Again, this will send only uh, one program, and you will have to save it. It's not persistent. If you choose program or just a PROG, that will send everything, and it's permanent. There's no undo. So before you click OK, uh, make sure. Make sure you've got everything you want off of it. So we're going to send one program, this, current, this currently loaded... swooshy pad leady thing uh, we're gonna send that over there so we're gonna cursor over to OK click yes are you sure yes we are one cent so that's black that's blue sorry that's blue so even odd even odd even odd even odd so now we can hit voices of polyphony and that's it so uh, quick recap make sure audio out on both units is set uh, make sure uh, your MIDI in to MIDI out your MIDI out on your primary to your MIDI in on your second unit you need to make sure you're on the same MIDI channel you need to make sure that sysx and all of your MIDI filters are enabled so they can send the full control over to the second device uh, that way, particularly, 
you know, if we're going to do a, you see, so one knob is affecting both devices, odd and even, so basically everything you do here is affecting the secondary device, so you don't get any weird uh, variations in the, in the sound coming out. Uh, so we've done all that. We've sent a patch over using the MIDI dump again. Uh, if I want to keep this on the, the blue unit over there, I'll need to go to the blue unit and write it and save it. And that's about it. I hope it helps some people out. If you like these kind of videos, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, I've got a few other instruments, but I have no clue on what kind of tutorials to do on them. And in fact, since I got the big black here, I'm kind of rearranging, got everything kind of tore down. I think something might have to come off the off the table to make room for it. Not sure what yet, but um, anyway, hope it helped. Thanks.